For former TSMC leader Morris Chang, the semiconductor giant he spent three to four decades building has now become a stable and influential player, nearly single-handedly defining the landscape of semiconductor foundry services. Having retired from TSMC, he no longer worries about specific technological nodes, but a cloud of concern looms over TSMC's new factories. Since May 2020, when TSMC initiated its factory construction plan in the United States, followed by the commencement of operations in Japan, expected to be operational by 2024, and the projected completion and production launch of the German factory between 2025 and 2026. Why did TSMC embark on this path of overseas expansion? Will these factories solidify TSMC's position in the semiconductor industry? Or will they gradually overshadow TSMC itself? Today, let's delve into a detailed analysis of TSMC's factories in the United States, Japan, and Germany. By the end, you will undoubtedly have answers. Let's begin. Arizona is not TSMC's first stop in the United States. In 1996, TSMC ventured far from home to Camas, Washington, establishing its first overseas 8 inch factory, WaferTech through a joint venture with other companies. By 2000, TSMC had acquired the remaining shares from the joint venture companies, increasing its ownership of WaferTech from the initial 57.23% to nearly 100%. In May 2020, TSMC announced the construction of a factory in Arizona, initially committing $12 billion in investment. In December of the same year, TSMC increased the investment to $40 billion planning to build two factories for the production of 5 nanometers and 3 nanometers chips, respectively. TSMC dispatched thousands of engineers, attracting the personal attendance of U.S. President Biden at the groundbreaking ceremony, and the Taiwan and U.S. media extensively covered the event. However, shortly thereafter, conflicts between TSMC and its U.S. facility unfolded like a soap opera. In July of this year, TSMC admitted that the Arizona factories for nanometers production timeline would be delayed from the originally scheduled end of 2024 to 2025 due to a shortage of skilled installation talent. Chairman Mark Liu stated that experienced professionals would need to be dispatched from Taiwan to train local technicians. This led to a strong backlash from the Arizona State Labor Union claiming that local labor had 40 years of experience in building and assembling wafer fabs for Intel and that TSMC's blame on U.S. workers was merely an excuse to bring in lower-paid labor. One of the largest unions in Arizona, representing over 15,000 construction workers, petitioned federal lawmakers to block visas for these Taiwanese workers. Given these challenges and overlooking geopolitical factors, what benefits could prompt TSMC and Morris Chang to willingly bow down to the difficulties of returning to the U.S.? Undoubtedly, the most crucial factor is the market and customers. According to media reports, seven out of TSMC's top 10 customers in 2022 are US-based companies, accounting for 59.9% of TSMC's revenue that year. US companies have long been its major clients, especially Apple, which alone contributes 23% to TSMC's annual revenue. The chip design advantages demonstrated by these clients are unparalleled globally, and the wafer capacity of TSMC's Arizona factory can easily accommodate the needs of just two of these clients, without worrying about the actual utilization rate of the production line. At the groundbreaking ceremony for TSMC's Arizona factory at the end of last year, not only did the US president attend, but the CEOs of Apple, Nvidia, and AMD, Tim Cook, Jensen Huang, and Lisa Su, also came, not only offering their blessings, but also announcing that their respective companies would be among the first customers. In 2020, the Japanese government extended an olive branch to TSMC. It's worth noting that, unlike the United States, Japan lags behind by at least a decade in semiconductor manufacturing. Even now, Japan can only produce chips with a 40 nanometers process making the sudden leap to advanced processes quite ambitious. However, the relentless financial support from the Japanese government eventually persuaded TSMC. 
after providing approximately 400 billion yen, about 3.486 billion US dollars, in subsidies. TSMC finally agreed and announced the establishment of its first factory in Japan, located in Kumamoto. For TSMC, establishing a factory in Japan comes with substantial tangible benefits. Beyond the generous government subsidy firstly, there's semiconductor materials. Any company involved in semiconductor manufacturing can't ignore Japan's comprehensive dominance in semiconductor materials. Of the 19 materials commonly used in the early stages of the semiconductor manufacturing process, Japanese companies virtually monopolize 14 of them. As the largest semiconductor foundry, TSMC naturally attracts attention from Japanese material suppliers. According to TSMC's 2021 annual report, most of its major raw material suppliers are Japanese companies, with many of them establishing subsidiaries, branches, or joint ventures in Taiwan to serve this major client conveniently. However, apart from these positive aspects, there are still quite a few challenges compared to establishing a factory in the United States. The first and foremost is the geographical aspect. Unlike the United States, Japan, being an island nation, has relatively scarce land resources. The chosen location, Kikuyo Town, was previously just a town of 43,000 people. The narrow local roads have led to severe traffic congestion since the commencement of factory construction. With the commuting time to the factory site reaching a lengthy 90 minutes the second issue revolves around human resources. TSMC's high salary offerings to attract talent have triggered concerns among local businesses, fearing talent drain and the likelihood of subsequent protests and opposition establishing a factory in Japan, relative to the United States, is more pragmatic. TSMC opted for a less challenging entry point by starting with the 28 nanometers process. This decision allows them to benefit from materials, subsidies, and market advantages. For TSMC, on the surface, it appears to be a cost-effective deal. The journey of establishing TSMC's German factory has been a series of twists and turns. From the first whispers in March 2021 about TSMC venturing to Europe to build a wafer fab, to the official announcement in August 2023 of TSMC's collaboration with Bosch, Infineon, and NXP to jointly invest in the European Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, ESMC. It took more than two years, ultimately, TSMC chose Dresden, Saxony, Germany, planning to commence construction of the wafer fab in the second half of 2024, with the goal of production starting by the end of 2027. The projected monthly capacity is 40,000 12-inch wafers, with a total investment exceeding 10 billion euros. Notably, TSMC's choice of Dresden as the location for its German factory is considered auspicious compared to the challenges faced in the previous two locations at Dresden, with its proximity to the Elbe River, assures abundant water resources. Moreover, as one of Europe's largest semiconductor industry hubs and often referred to as the Silicon Valley of Europe, Dresden offers impeccable infrastructure for industrial development. It appears to be an ideal location for TSMC, however. Even this auspicious site has encountered a minor hiccup in terms of electricity. Behind the widening power gap is Germany's gradual phase-out of fossil fuel and nuclear power plants. While renewable energy, energy storage systems, and natural gas power plants are developing, the progress isn't swift enough. Currently, Germany still needs to import nuclear power from France and coal power from Poland. With TSMC and Intel setting up operations in Germany, electricity supply shortages might become a constant concern. Of course, since TSMC chose Germany, it must have negotiated matters such as electricity and water prices. Setting aside the geographical challenges, Dresden is indeed a rare and advantageous choice for establishing a factory. Several semiconductor-related companies, including Global Foundries, Bosch, XFab, and NXP, have already established wafer fabs in Dresden. Many semiconductor-related enterprises have strategically positioned themselves in the region, providing TSMC with conveniences in materials, equipment, and market access that may be hard to obtain elsewhere globally. And moreover, the future automotive market in Germany is crucial.
the semiconductor shortage crisis significantly reduced German car production in 2021, dropping by 50% compared to 2017, according to data from the German Automotive Research Center. In 2022, the European Union announced the prohibition of selling combustion engine cars within the EU by 2035. Given that electric vehicles consume two to three times more chips than traditional vehicles, chip demand in Germany, already facing shortages, is expected to grow. While many perceive TSMC's global expansion as a response to global geopolitical pressures, others believe TSMC is leaving to enhance its global competitiveness, the question remains. What defines TSMC's global competitiveness? When the chips produced by TSMC play a role in electronic devices worldwide, it already demonstrates its formidable competitiveness. Pouring money into overseas factories might further enhance its competitiveness, but is it a guarantee? To build factories in the United States, Japan, and Germany, TSMC will undoubtedly deploy a significant number of chip engineers and even involve several construction teams. While the wafer fabs in the US, Japan, and Germany are taking shape, TSMC's factories in Taiwan might lose their favor. I believe that TSMC's global factory construction is nothing more than a trade-off between technology and investment for market access permits, as well as a continuous supply of equipment and materials. Presently, TSMC is likely uneasy, having contributed 13% to Taiwan's GDP. It hopes its investments will not go in vain, yet it also wishes to keep orders within the island. The global rise of TSMC due to globalization now faces uncertainties amid the current trend of deglobalization. Will its global factory construction strategy continue to succeed? Only time will tell. This concludes today's sharing and we'll meet again in the next time.